Hi, this is Paul, developer of Hyperion. I want to talk about some of the patches in Patch Pack 03 Pick and Mix, which was just released a week or two ago. And I'm going to talk about some of the more interesting aspects of the patch design, what, make, what makes each patch unique, and what are the interesting aspects of the sound and why, why they were designed in a certain way. I'm just going to take a look at some of the patches and take a look at some of the techniques that I've used in the design of these patches. Let's take a look at this uh, first patch, uh, Wave Sequencing 1.5. As you may know, the original Wave Station had something called Wave Sequencing, and the Wave State that was just recently released by Cork has got Wave Sequencing 2.0. So this is kind of just a, a fun name in relation to those two products. This isn't really Wave Sequencing, this is basically stepping through audio inputs and I'll just quickly play this sound for you. So what makes this patch interesting is the stepping through these four input sources, two FM nodes and two standard oscillators. And what's driving that is this pulse width modulated square LFO and it's a global LFO that means it uh, has the same effect on all the voices so all the voices will be in sync and this pulse is driving the trigger to this audio stepper every time I press a key for the first key that's pressed down it will reset the phase of this of this LFO so it will it will trigger in sync to when I press the keys but if I press any extra keys the the um, the LFO won't get phase reset again, only on the first time I press a key down. And what makes what makes this patch interesting, I would say from a tone perspective, is that whilst uh, we're just cycling through four steps, and you can see here on the audio stepper parameters, the last step is step four, and loop is enabled. Um, what makes it interesting is that over time the the different modulation parameters of, of these oscillators are slowly modulated. So whilst you'll hear the same oscillators being cycled through, as you cycle through you kind of get infinite changes because these parameters are being slowly modulated by these multiple slow sine LFOs. So we can see you can see the shape parameter here is being modulated really slowly and you can see how that affects the wave shape. In this case it's this LF, uh, sorry this sine wave is has oscillator sync so we're basically modulating the sync frequency. But it's being modulated at a much slower rate than the stepping. So that's why every time it steps through, you'll get a slightly slightly different tonal output. Same here with the upper um, oscillator, which is a buzz wave. You can see the the shape. It's actually doing some wave folding of some kind. And so that gradually changes the the tonal characteristic of the characteristic of the wave shape. Actually, in this case, um, for this particular wave shape, the shape parameter looks like it controlling the the pulse width of this wave shape. And then for the FM nodes, we have some modulation of the A, B and C operator levels. It's um, independent per voice, so each note will have a different level because these oscillate, uh, so these, these LFOs here, these are polyphonic LFOs. So they are going to be at random phases for each voice. And to top it off, there's some chorus and phasing, which adds some slow tonal modulation as well. Let's take a look at this Bode comb patch. Uh, this is a string simulation patch. I'm using the comb filter with some noise, 
but also a saw wave going into the comb filter too. Both of those, the noise and the saw wave, are, are pre-filtered. And then the comb filter does have a big impact on the sound. But so does this reverb. I have a, a reverb at the output here on the effects bus, uh, which is actually acting more like a body resonator. If I just disable the main reverb, you can hear that this reverb isn't really acting like a room reverb. I mean, it's got such a short delay time, it's almost like a comb filter itself. And um, it acts as a, a resonator for all of the voices at once. I also have a saw wave just going straight into the this gain and pan node here, which is mixed with the output of the comb filtered sound. If we just disable that one, we can just listen to the the sound of the filtered noise and saw wave. And even if I disable this saw, you'll still hear that whilst we've got noise here as a source, it's actually already pre-filtered to some extent. So it's, it's quite a it's quite um, low-pass filtered noise already, and then it's going into a filter. And then the comb filter is set to the maximum amount of feedback, and there's some gain because it's pretty quiet after all that filtering. There isn't that much um, level left behind, so there's some gain. If I add that saw back, so so you you can hear that the the noise is it doesn't sound like noise anymore. It's a pitched tone. That's because the comb filter has the maximum feedback setting here, and the comb filter's frequency is driven by the oscillator frequency, which is connected to the notes input node. If I just disable the comb filter feedback, you can hear what's going into that comb filter, it's just noise. And if I if I turn down the shape here, it will actually open up the filter on the noise. And we can also open the filter slightly here. It's already quite open. And then if I turn the feedback up, you'll hear that classic kind of um, car plus strong type sound, but because the level of the comb filter is modulated by an ADSR, which has got quite a slow attack. Let's have a look. You don't get that plucked sound, it's more of a, a slow level change. And the, the main amplitude envelope here, ADSR1, has also got a fairly slow um, ramp time. So let's enable that oscillator again and turn down the, the filter here. Bring back in this second oscillator, or third oscillator actually. All these oscillators are mono and they don't have pan spreading because like to simulate a string sound I wanted to make it sound like it was coming from an individual instrument in terms of each note that's played. However, this is kind of an ensemble, an ensemble sound. And um, if you look, this key tracking is applied to a few different things, as is velocity. And that helps to differentiate each key so that each key has a slightly different tone. Let's turn this reverb back on. And the modulation wheel here is used to open up the filter and open up the amplitude slightly, which is um, quite important for string sounds. You want a lot of modulation capability for the volume. And it's also connected to the vibrato level. So as you turn up the modulation, it's opening the filter, it's increasing the vibrato, and it's increasing the volume level overall. Let's just 
go back to the original patch. So it's quite velocity sensitive this patch um, if you really play the keys softly there's quite a low a low filter cut off on the main filter here which is controlling the the mix of all of the oscillators but if you hit the keys hard you'll open up that filter There's a compressor here as well because with the comb filter and the level being modulated, the filter level being modulated by the keys can get quite loud and it can uh, overdrive the reverb a bit. So I've added a compressor to take away some of that intensity. The mod wheel output by default is um, also controlled by the aftertouch. If you don't patch the aftertouch output to anything, uh, which is the case with this patch, then aftertouch on your keyboard will also affect the mod wheel level, which lets you add expression without actually having to take your fingers off the keys. So let's take a look at Dust Bouncer. This is a patch which is mainly driven by the arpeggiator and it uses distortion to have quite a hard tone just turn that down a bit actually so yeah what's driving this patch what's what's giving it that unique tone is probably this EQ distortion the tone controls here are applied pre distortion and then post distortion basically the opposite tone control is applied at the, at the other side of the distortion <laughs> but another significant um, side of this sound is this granulator and you'll notice when I release the keys there's quite a moment before the sound dies away and that's not really because there's a massive release, well there is quite a long release time but it's not the only reason one of the reasons the the sound takes a long time to die away so there's a fairly short release time on the voices level here but the granulator itself has a fairly long grain length setting which is also being modulated you can see here and when there's a long grain length it takes a while for those grains to finish playing out once they've been started this patch uses the mod wheel to open up the filter and modulate some of the oscillator shapes Yeah, one of these oscillators is using OSSYNC, which provides quite a harsh sound. Everything is um, eventually put through a, a little bit of filtering at the output just to reduce the high pitch noise. Just to tame it a little bit. And the reverb is there. It's fairly subtle, but the this global ADSR, which is linked to this any keys down trigger, it gradually brings in the wet level of the reverb here. Or at least it, it gradually cuts it down, sorry. 
so the attack time is actually quite short but it's um when you release the keys it's reducing the wet level for the the reverb <laughs> Let's look at the next patch. Let's look at this patch called Hyperdoodles. Uh, this patch was inspired by a patch I heard on my wave state module, uh, which had a sequence of notes that sounded really interesting. And what I've done with this patch to make it even more interesting in my view is to have several sequences of notes. And there's actually three integer sequence nodes here. And what happens in this patch is that each of these sequence nodes actually have the same data in them. And the way I did that was by creating the first one, creating the the steps, and the steps apply an offset to the note value that comes from the notes input node. That gets mixed together into this notes to hertz node, which provides the frequencies to the oscillator. So we're not really re-triggering notes, we're just modulating the oscillator frequencies for each of these oscillators with these sequences. And you can copy a node by selecting it, and you can either use the icon, the button here, the duplicate selected nodes button, or you can right-click on the node and do a, a duplicate operation here. And what I've done is I've duplicated that integer sequence. But if you take a look at the actual sequences, so if we look at sequence one here, sequence one is, has, has the last step set to seven, sequence two has the last step set to six, and sequence three has the last step set to five. So as they loop forever, they will you know, rotate and have this kind of polyrhythmic tonal shifting as I keep hold, holding the keys down. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, the patch is relatively simple in terms of the oscillator setup. We've got a couple of FM oscillators. One of them, I believe, is set to a different pitch, or at least one of these oscillators is... I may, yeah, there we go. So um, the stereo oscillator here is plus seven semitones. So that actually shifts the pitch of all of the notes generated by sequence three here. And then... To, to make this even less static and more interesting, uh, we do some modulation with some slow LFOs to modulate, say, the FM frequency modulation depth. It's quite subtle, it's not a huge amount of modulation going on there. And here you can see the, the shape parameter is also modulated by an LFO for the standard oscillator. That's pretty much it. There's nothing special going on sonically otherwise, it's just some FM nodes. One of them is fairly low harmonically, you know, not, not that much richness harmonically, and the other one has got a slightly stronger amount of FM. And you can see how the operator level here and the mix on the other os oscillator are being slowly modulated by these LFOs. Everything goes through a filter to to give me a global tone control, which is mapped to the macros, and everything's also going through an echo, but the dry wet level is pretty low, so it's mostly dry sound. And it's a tempo synced echo, which um which is something I tend to try and do for all my patch packs and factory patches. Anytime I use an echo, I try to use beat synced echoes because that's quite useful for people who use Taya and uh, they don't have the ability to go in and edit these patches. So having beat synced echo when it's appropriate, when it's a kind of a rhythmic sound, makes a lot of sense so that it will actually synchronize to your music project in your door. <laughs> Let's have a look at another patch. So 
So this is a relatively simple patch. The thing that makes it interesting is this inverted trigger. So ADSR1 is controlling the level of the sound for each voice, which is typical and that works the way you would expect it to. Uh, but in the case of in the case of the ADSR2, the trigger is actually inverted. So when I when I press a key, it's actually releasing the the releasing the envelope. And when I release a key, it's starting the envelope. And there's a small delay here, so you hear a kind of slight echo or glitch when I release the keys because it modulates this this ADSR modulates the FM mod depth and the C operator level. So you can see how the C operator level jumps up as does the mod depth of the FM op operator here. Sorry, the FM oscillator mod depth. So this mod control actually controls the overall level of these ABC modulators. So you can control their level independently but this mod depth is basically like a, a gain control for the overall amount of FM in the algorithm. And you can see when I turn it up, we get a lot more harmonic content. If you want to generate a kind of white noise sound with FM, you can just turn the modulation up to quite a high level and it almost becomes like a white noise generator. Quite useful for metallic sounds, cymbal type sounds, gongs, that kind of thing. And there's a bit of echo again, and like I said before, I tend to use tempo sync in the factory patches uh, because this is a, a sound where it's kind of got an echo that would be useful to be linked to the music that you're playing. Let's take a look at Vocoder Army. Uh, this patch is a patch which is where the sort of principal interest is driven by these tempo synced ramp and pulse LFOs. So it sounds, you know, like there's some kind of sequencer going on, but it's, there's no sequencer here. There's no there's no step sequencer. There's no arpeggiator. The arpeggiator is turned off. Um, but what you're hearing is a combination of multiple beat synced LFOs who have their phase reset when you press a key down for the first time. And then you can see how those LFOs are modulating things like filter inputs. Or the level of the noise oscillator here. Or if we click again, we can see it's also controlling this sine wave, which is controlling uh, the vowel filter here. But um, the vowel filter is not actually doing anything for the moment until I turn up the modulation level with the mod wheel where, I, where it's connected to the wet dry control. Um, but I would say one of the more interesting features of this patch is the fact that I've also mapped the sustain pedal. Uh, to control the same thing. So if we take a look at the sustain pedal input, I'll have a, a viewer node here just so we can see what's going on. When I press the pedal, now I'm pressing it, um, you'll, you'll hear and see what happens to this valve filter. And to not have a very jarring tonal change, there's a little bit of smoothing applied. So when I hit the sustain pedal, the input to the data smoother is, is a pulse, but um, the wet dry control of the valve filter is, 
is smoothly ramped in. You can see these um, ramps are operating at, at different tempo synced rates and you can play with these beat sync values to get different kind of rhythmic effects. That's quite a lot of fun to play with. Um, not a lot of uh, other unique things in here. I mean, we've got some noise going in, into a comb filter again, um, so that it's going to end up as pitched a pitched sound. Um, and you can see the the level of the noise is also being controlled by that ramp LFO. So these ramp LFOs, they are um, global LFOs. That means they affect all the voices at the same time so it doesn't matter the sequence of notes that I play the tonal changes will be applied to all the voices in sync let's look at another patch So let's take a look at bending space. So there's a couple of elements in this patch which make it sound the way it does. First of all, there's a really long glide time. So there's a polyphonic glide applied to this patch because it is a polyphonic patch, it's eight voices. And uh, the glide mode is using the the nearest voice frequency, so it will glide from the previously nearest frequency uh, that was a that was in the voice pool. There are other modes you can try out, um, but this this long glide time is part of the way part of the reason why this sound sounds the way it does. Another thing that's um, quite significant is this ramp up LFO. which which has an impact on a few things including the filter cutoff um, what else does it let's have a look where does it go if I click on the plus button here yeah you can see it's affecting the multi filter and I believe somewhere it must be affecting the pitch of something uh, yeah there's a, so it's affecting the ring modulator pitch and this LFO is um, is a peak LFO which goes up and down. It's um, unipolar, and it's affecting the LFO level and pitch. So the frequency of this LFO is speeding up uh, where where it's modulating this filter. Mm. This, uh, this saw wave sound here has its pan toggled, um, its pan position toggled on every key down. That's the key down toggle output, which is either positive or negative. And so it's, it's panning this sound to the right or the left, every key down. And that's also kind of a, a fairly significant detail of this patch.
the spring modulator is using a frequency ratio multiplier and that's going to mean that the uh, frequency is used to control the, the ring modulator frequency but it's um, three times the frequency that, that's coming in and this tracks the keys that are being played. I can change that for different effects. And uh, the pitch bending is, is, all, is all related to the glide actually. If I turn that off Then you mainly hear this um, modulation of the multi-filter and this uh, output low-pass filter gradually opening. So this multi-filter is the one that, where you're hearing that kind of wobbling sound. So not only is it being gradually opened up, and the blend, the mix between the, the in this case it's a low pass and a band pass filter in parallel, the blend is being gradually increased, but the modulation speed of the LFO here, which is controlling the cutoff, is changing gradually through this peak LFO. This um, split parameter is also being driven by the key down toggle. Uh, what that means is the because the filter stereo, we can control the cutoff on both the left and the right hand side of the stereo image differently. And that's what's happening with this split input. It's modulating the cutoff so they're slightly different on the left and the right. And that's quite a nice way to get some stereo spreading. Let's take a look at this patch, Plucky Piano. So although I've called it a piano, it doesn't really sound like a piano, but it's got some, some similarities, some kind of tonal resemblance. And the main thing is that makes this sound interesting is this comb filter and this sine wave, which is actually, it's not a sine wave, it's using oscillator sync to generate quite a richly uh, sound quite rich in harmonics as the input to the the comb filter and um, quite important also is the fact that the the shape is being modulated on the trigger for each note here so this ADSR3 here is um, creating this initial rich harmonic pulse into the comb filter and the comb filter is set to the maximum amount of feedback but and it's fre frequency tracking the oscillator so it sounds a bit like a hammered or plucked string um, but it's kind of the way it's set up with the with the tone here and the filter following the comb filter it's, it's fairly filtered and it sounds it's kind of reminiscent of a piano string like a low string on the piano this sine wave is not going through any comb filter, it's just there to add some body, so it's set to minus 12 semitones. This patch is designed to be velocity reactive, so the amount of the, of, um, the comb filter level here and the, the depth of this shape modulation controlling this sync sound is controlled by the velocity level at the input here. So you get more overtones or more high, high frequency content when you hit the keys harder. Another thing to note is that perhaps I wanted to tame the high frequency resonance a little bit from, from the comb filter output and so I've got a, a dual band compressor in the chain here with um, a lower threshold for the low side of the frequency band because this is a two band 
uh, compressor with a crossover and I've set the crossover around 1k. It's fairly subtle what it's doing but if I play lots of keys it might have um, a bigger effect. The mod wheel is patched into a few different things um, to modulate the shape of the sine waves again. Which really uh, brightens up the sound a lot and it's patched into the filter. And of course there are macro controls that are mapped to some of the sound characteristics including the decay. Let's take a look at the next patch. So let's take a look at this patch, it's called Hammered Dulcimer. Um, it's a fairly simple patch in the sense that it's kind of like a typical car plus strong implementation with noise going into a comb filter uh, with the comb filter frequency or the delay time being you know, modulated by the note input frequency. So again, if I as I've shown in other patches, if I turn the wet dryer down to dry, you just hear noise. That's a bit too loud. And so yeah, we turn it all the way up uh, with feedback. And the comb filter level is modulated by an envelope. Now what's interesting about this patch, you've probably just noticed, and you can see I, had, I left the graph node here, uh, is that I have a, a custom LFO which has got three pulses and if we take a look at the parameters here it's set to be on single cycle and you can see occasionally you'll get this pulse output and you don't get it all the time if I play low velocity notes I won't get this trigger this multi trigger and the reason for that is I have this binary trigger node here that's set up to look at the level of the incoming notes and if the level is above a certain threshold 0.8 in this case so one would represent the full velocity or MIDI 127 and if you can reach that threshold it will actually send a, a one to the output here then that goes into this binary logic node which um, it basically is gonna and that input with the trigger pin and if they're both positive then we'll get a trigger to this PWM square LFO which enables the trigger to this custom LFO and if you keep the key held down because this is a fairly long pulse and because this custom LFO is a fairly fast frequency um, it will let it trigger these three pulses. The binary trigger here is triggered by the velocity level but if I turn up this mod wheel I can get it to always trigger and uh, yeah so the the sound is pretty basic, but the thing that makes it interesting or unique is this ability to have this multi-trigger, which is kind of simulating when you're playing the, I think that, you know, the hammers on a dulcimer, sometimes the player will make them bounce on the string so they'll trigger a couple of notes or three notes in a row. And that's what this is designed to simulate. So it's going to add a little bit of random re-triggering. But if I want to have more control over that, instead of hitting the keys harder, I can just turn up the mod wheel level when I want to do those re-triggers. I mean, I'm playing a pentatonic scale, so it sounds a bit Chinese, but this is not necessarily a Chinese sound.
I'm using some noise into a comb filter here to get that plucked sound, but it's also going into a vowel filter just to give it a bit of a different tonal characteristic, which is also driven both by the keyboard and the velocity level. So the keyboard range affects a few different things, including release times and the panning as well is actually affected by the keyboard range. So if you look at the output node here, um, the default pan is slightly to the left, and that means that the lowest notes on the keyboard will pan towards the left-hand side. Even though I've also got a note key down toggle here, which is toggling the pan left and right, it's mostly to the left at the low notes, and if I hit notes up higher up on the keyboard, it's towards the right hand side of the stereo image so that's one of the ways to get more of a spread sound in this in this patch i've got a filter in the effects bus that acts as a global tone control that's mapped to the macro controls Yep, so that's um, that's the hammer dosma patch in summary. Um, you could maybe add more note repeats by just changing the shape of this custom LFO, or just change the timing uh, to suit your needs. Let's take a look at chain reaction. Uh, this is a pad type sound which is evolving uh, but it has one special feature which, which you'll hear when I release the keys so the unique or interesting feature on this patch is uh, and that's why I called it chain reaction is that there's a chain of ADSR nodes here and the first ADSR node is using an inverted trigger option. That means it's only triggered when I release the keys. And when I release the keys, it's going to turn up the level of this sign oscillator. So here I'm going to release the key. And then you can also see that the active state output of this envelope is used to trigger the other two ADSRs and these ADSRs are slightly delayed one after the other so you have this kind of echoing bell effect and I'm just using a sine wave for the first echo and then the next one is a slightly more complex tone because it's actually using a sine wave but with oscillator sync and unison detuning If I turn that off, sounds slightly different. And if I bring that, turn off the unison, you can actually now see how this um, crush parameter is affecting the, the wave shape. Actually, when you stack up sounds with unison um, and you detune them, this crush parameter uh, will have, it will look a lot less like bit crushing because the wave shapes are overlaid because of the detuning. And otherwise, um, in terms of the patch to make it have this kind of evolving sound or a sound that changes over time, there's a wave sequence. It's only a two-step FM wave sequence. And um, you can see that the second step has a higher pitch. The transpose is, is uh, plus 12 semitones. Otherwise, it's fairly similar. got a fairly complex wave shape going into a comb filter here um, and it's also using 100% feedback 
with the pitch tracking. It's just a way to get a different tone out of the oscillators. You don't have to use comb filters for plucked sounds or string sounds. It's just sometimes a nice way to have some tonal variation. This sound has um, a relatively short decay time, relatively, um, but it takes longer to decay because the granulator has a quite long grain length of 0.26 seconds and a rate of 7 grains per second. So when I release the keys, apart from the, those delayed triggers, you also get those granules that take a while to play out. That's um, granules that are uh, basically sampled from a moving buffer of audio coming from the mix of all of the voices at the audio output node here. This sound uses the built-in vibrato feature of the notes input node. That's a new feature that was added not that long ago, a few months ago maybe. And it just means that I can have some pitch modulation applied to this frequency output value. And it's the same pitch modulation applied to all oscillators. You can also use an LFO to do the same and maybe that you only want to do vibrato on one particular oscillator. Let's look at the next patch. Let's take a look at this patch. It's called Cosmic Warbler. So I guess the main tonal interest in this sound is, is the modulation of this filter here. And you can see that there's a square wave LFO that's toggling the filter cutoff up and down quite quickly. But that square wave starts off at quite a low level. And its level is being modulated by this ADSR and also its pitch is being modulated by uh, the, the key-driven ADSR, but also by an LFO, which itself has its level increased by another envelope. And this um, ADSR-3 has a, a nearly, well, three quarters of a second delay here. And so it doesn't it doesn't have an effect straight away. It takes it a little while to get going. We also have an LFO slowly controlling the modulation depth of the FM node here, and at the same time, it's controlling the panning of this saw wave. And uh, generally with these kind of patches, it's just nice to have lots of LFOs that are slowly modulating things to get that kind of evolving sound that you want with patches quite often. Uh, what you want with pads, I meant to say. Um, these LFOs give you this nice evolving sound that you want with pads quite often. Let's take a look at the next patch. Uh, this patch is called Panoropad, and I mean, the main reason it's called Panoropad is because panning is a big element of the sound in this patch. Let's have a quick listen. So 
so there's um, some slow tonal modulation going on here which is a lot of that comes from this wave sequence node which is an FM wave sequence it only has three steps and I can cycle through them by just um, moving this start position here um, but you can see that position is being slowly modulated by a triangle wave and it's a global wave so that means it affects all the voices at the same time uh, where where the panning comes in we have two global LFOs and they both control pan but they're both running at slightly different phases um, to each other so the start phase of the of the LFO3 here is has a different has a different start phase offset to the other LFO you can see they're inverted actually and one of these LFOs it's having a small impact on the pitch of the other LFO so the speed of the other LFO is being modulated slightly and the note toggle output is also toggling the phase of LFO2 by a small amount. So basically, you know, we're getting some shifts in the pan phase of these two global LFOs. I guess what makes this sound um, like a panning pad is, is the fact that I'm using a global modulator for the each oscillator, and that means that every time Anytime I press a key, doesn't matter which order or how, uh, what the timing between the keys are, each oscillator voice will be panned in sync. So they, they will stay in sync with the global oscillator, uh, global LFO, which makes it easier to hear the panning for each oscillator. It makes it makes it easier to dis distinguish the FM oscillator and the saw oscillator. Otherwise, we have a, another oscillator here, the triangle, with some shape modulation. And that's just providing a little bit more depth because it's transposed down by 12 semitones. Let's take a look at panspermia. Uh, this is a, an evolving pad sound which makes the most of sample and hold LFOs. The sample and hold LFOs uh, will trigger a lot of sonic variation because they are per voice LFOs so they're all out of phase for each voice and to, to avoid really abrupt tonal changes, there is a little bit of smoothing applied to the output of each of those, and they go to various sonic control parameters, panning, the level of the operators here, and the filter cutoff in this case here. So you have this kind of shifting sound, and I guess the the LFOs, these sample and hold LFOs here, these are the ones that really make this sound specifically what it is. There's a bit of um, noise that's very subtly mixed in, it's quite low level, um, it's going into a bandpass filter, in this case it's a sine wave, quite often people will modulate a bandpass with noise with a SNH LFO, but in this case I'm doing it with a sine wave. But the noise is heavily filtered, so you, you can barely hear it. It's just a, a bit of atmosphere in the back of the patch, in the, at the back of the sound. And if I, if I open up this filter, you'll hear a lot more noise. This could be an idea for you to try out um, to add another LFO, maybe a per-voice LFO here, 
to add some filter modulation to the bandpass cutoff. These um, these uh, bandpass filters, as I said, are often used with noise, with sample and hold. We could switch this to a sample and hold, make it unipolar because I just want to modulate in the positive direction, and speed it up. And that's a, a very commonly used effect in sound design. But if I turn up the resonance on the bandpass filter you'll hear a lot more pitched sound just have to be a little bit careful with the levels here and for an even more pitched sound you can try the Moog filters there's a Moog bandpass you just got to be really careful with that one because it can get quite screamy especially when the slope is turned up to the max here Anyway, that's a, a nice way to change the patch, make it something different. Maybe turning down the level here to something more reasonable. Okay, let's look at another patch. Uh, let's take a look at this sound. This is called Perseids Shower. Um, I guess that's relating to meteoroids or meteorites. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, this is actually a sound that there's a similar sound to this on my hydrosynth and I wanted to make something similar and basically the, the, the kind of key feature of this sound is this note sequence which is repeating over and over. But apart from that note sequence, which is just driving a fairly simple sine tone with a little bit of shape modulation, um, there's a evolving wave sequence which slowly sweeps through four different tones. This um, integer sequence here is just adding pitched offsets to the notes that are coming from the notes output of the notes input node and then it's being summed those are being summed with the integer sequence and this note to hertz this note to hertz node uh, whilst it uses a midi note as an input it has an option here called use master tuning and just to be aware, if you change the master tuning here, that allows you to have this note to hertz node follow the master tuning, which is quite useful, I guess. Otherwise, for this kind of other aspect of the evolving sound, we have some slow modulations, as I'll often do in, in pad sounds, that just gradually shift things around to make it sonically interesting and in this case the blend parameter of the multi-filter is gradually being moved around so we're blending between a low pass Ober Oberheim style filter and a Salon key high pass so if I blend if I blend all the way to the right it's only going to be the high pass filter Or the low pass filter if I go all the way to the to the lowest value here. Let's take a look at this uh, patch called Interstellar Drifter. It's another evolving pad kind of sound that I quite like. There's, that's why there's quite a few of them in this pack. So there's a couple of elements to this sound that make it 
evolving and interesting to listen to. Firstly, we use some slowly modulated FM wave sequence tone here. So that's sweeping between some different tones that are set up. And there's only two actually on the table. Um, but it's a, enough of a modulation or an, enough of a parameter change that it makes it interesting. You can see if I sweep between the two steps, you can see they're quite differently set up. And the start position modulation gradually crossfades between those two different oscillator configurations. Now, pro probably one of the signature sounds in this patch is this warble or, you know, slowly pitching down sound. And that's driven by a, a pulse width modulated square, which is an LFO, um, whose pitch starts off at the maximum pitch mod and gradually slows down. And also its, its level gets reduced over time. This uh, math node here is multiplying the keyboard tracking value with the smoothed output of this square LFO, PWM square LFO. So it means the higher notes have a bigger impact on the level modulation of this sine wave. So if I play low notes, you can see the, um, the level is being modulated a little bit, but if I play high notes, you can see it's it's a much higher level and it's a lot more modulation. And then the other thing that makes this sound evolve and interesting to listen to is this vector mixer, which um, is mixing four different effects and randomly sweeping between different values uh, in terms of the position of this mixer. Um, and that's driven by these S and H LFOs, which are global. Um, because the effects bus treats all the voices at once, so it can't actually be modulated with polyphonic modulators. You need all voice modulators or global modulators for this. These LFOs um, are ramped in so that they don't immediately start modulating, but they get stronger as you hold the notes down. And uh, the, there's only one parameter for this vector mixer and that's the smooth time and so whilst these LFOs are sample and hold so they provide very jumpy outputs the smoothing here is basically filtering the X and Y input values so that the tra transitions that whilst they're jumping around they're fairly smooth so it's not a sharp um, like a sharp change in the audio levels between the different sources Look at a couple more. Okay, let's take a look at tender keys. This is a fairly simple electric piano type sound. I guess two of the most significant things in this patch are the tremolo and the vibrato. The vibrato is built in. Um, the level is modulated by the mod wheel, so when I turn up the mod wheel I get more vibrato and it also opens the filter here and the tremolo is, is its depth and speed are, are mapped to these macro controls. There's a little bit of tonal variation through the velocity control, so the level here has an impact on how loud this sword wave, sword wave is. 
and um, it also has an impact on the filter cutoff. With the key tracking pin, the higher notes are opening the filter more, and the lower notes have got a lower, closed, more closed filter. And another feature of this patch is quite often used in electric piano patches is some way to have a little click sound, um, a little pulse, and I'm using this peak LFO in single cycle mode. So every time I hit the key, it's just popping up and down and it's having a very subtle effect, but it's popping up a little bit of modulation on the operator A level and the resonance actually in this case. We can turn that up so you can more easily hear what's going on there. And we could even add it to the FM mod depth. Let's take a look at this patch. It's um, it's called Stratospheric Drifter. It's another evolving pad sound. I guess the key feature of this sound is these two multi-phasers. Um, uh, they're both triggered by the key down, and they are both voice effects. That means they are just like a filter in a in a multi-voice patch. They're not part of the uh, the main mix. Um, that's you know they're not part of this main effects bus. They are per voice, so every time you hit a key, the phase of these phases gets reset. And you can see um, on the multiphaser two, the start phase is different to multiphaser one. Even though otherwise they're fairly identical, they both have the same phase speed. And we have some per voice modulation with a little bit of randomization with these LFOs, which um, modulate the shape of these oscillators. Um, but every time you hit a key, the start phase is slightly different. Uh, otherwise, um, and I'm still using, often using noise into a, a band pass here with some modulation. That's always an interesting sound. In this patch, it's, it's pretty low, quite low level. You can turn that up a bit. Sometimes it's nice to have these things super obvious and other times it's nice to have them just really subtly in the background and in this patch I originally set it to quite a low, a low level. This patch is um, also doing voice spreading, per voice spreading with the key down toggle and both of these oscillators going into the phaser, per voice phasers have got some pan offset and they're inverted from each other. One of them is using negative pan offset and the other one is using positive pan offset in terms of this key toggle value. But at the output all of these sound sources are being panned as well a uh, small amount by the key down toggle, not my, not by much. And there's also a global LFO which modulates the overall pan of all of the voices at the same time.
let's see, maybe we can look at one more patch and then I have to go make dinner. Um, hmm. So this is a Duduk patch. It's maybe not super realistic, but it's an approximation. And this has been achieved by using some noise into some filters and some distortion and vowel filtering to get that kind of tube type sound. And also at the effects side, there's also a tube resonator, which gives a little bit more of that kind of tubey sound. And one of the really important aspects of this particular patch is the modulation wheel. As you can see, it's patched to a lot of things. It's really required to use the mod wheel to actually make this sound semi-realistic or expressive. So I'll just show you. Uh, with a data viewer, the mod wheel input. So here the mod wheel is closed. And I'm going to open it up. So it's really important to modulate the mod wheel on this sound um, it, as you would maybe if you were playing the real instrument by your breath control. And it might be nice to hook up a breath controller with this particular patch. And um, you could do that by, you know, easily, more easily by, by taking a, the CC input node here and picking, you know, breath control as your input and then you could also have a CC output node here and you could just map that to the mod wheel and that way you can basically remap a, remap an incoming message back to the same patch so you can translate a message basically that would be a quick way to get breath control onto this patch Another important aspect of this kind of solo sound is uh, the glide, the portamento, and uh, more specifically velocity glide. So this velocity glide parameter um, lets you play more expressively de depending on how hard you hit the keys between notes. It will uh, bend at a different speed. So if I hit the keys hard, there's almost no bending at all, there's no glide, but if I play slowly and softly and actually the volume level of this patch is it's probably more important to control it through the mod wheel than through um, key velocity although there's a combination of both in, in this patch um, so it's a really expressive patch and it sounds most interesting when you play with the key velocity, timing and the mod wheel. You can modulate some of the tube resonator parameters here with the macros to get a different tone. But those, those parameters are best to be set and left in position rather than moved around. One interesting feature here is this mapper, data mapper. 
um, I guess I wanted to have a non-linear key response. So normally the key mapping is a linear key mapping from 0 to 1, and it's a straight line, but I needed to have a slightly different response across the keyboard um, so that the lower notes are quieter here, and then the higher notes are quieter, but the middle of the range is louder. So that's what I did. That's why I've got this MSEC data mapper. It basically boosts the level of the notes in the middle of the range, which is the range where you would typically play this instrument, I guess. These noise oscillators are basically simulating breath input, and so um, their levels are, are going to be modulated by envelopes. And I'm only interested in the, the higher uh, frequencies of that noise, just to simulate that breathing sound. Okay, I hope that was useful. Um, I might talk about some other patches in another video, but I think that's enough for today. A patch pack free is um, available at traction.com and uh, you can get some more information about it on my website, wavesequencer.com. Details in the video description.